sir bharani fine ah extubated but Good evening to one and all. Myself, Dr. Nishad, first year DM resident from ICH Chennai. Here we are presenting one case scenario of familial hypertriglyceridemia under the title of Unraveling Milky Serum in Neonates under the guidance of Dr. Kamal Ratnam and Dr. Anita. Coming to case scenario. A uh, 15 day old male baby who is presented to us with complaints of refusal of feeds and lethargy for past one day, followed by one episode of seizures. On history, we noticed bad CRP practices in form of Vasambo application to the umbilicus. Baby was born to 23 year old primary mother to second degree consanguineous couple. Mother antenatal period was uneventful, antenatal scans were normal. Delivered by normal vaginal delivery at full-term gestation with birth weight was 2.590 grams with normal perinatal transition. Breastfeeding was started uh, one, one hour after delivery and the baby got discharged at day three of life. First two weeks at home uh, was uneventful period. Family history is no significant family history was noted. No history of any sudden deaths in the family members. On examination, baby was awake but lethargic. We noticed temperature around 37.4 degrees centigrade, which is febrile. Hydration is fair. Color was pink, but paler we noticed on general examination, but no dysmorphic features. On systemic examination, liver was palpable, which is 3 cm below the right coastal margin. Firm in consistency. Liver span was 5.5 cm. Spleen also palpable, which is 2 cm below the left coastal margin. Other systemic examination was normal. On vena puncture, baby was found to have lipemic sample. On CBC, we noticed a total leukocyte count around 18,200 and hemoglobin was very high, which is not recorded by the conventional method. By spectrometry, we, we saw that hemoglobin level was 23.4 gram per deciliter, but hematocrit is showing around 26.5 only. Platelets also very high, which is around 10 lakhs. For, uh, uh, for in sepsis workup, we noticed uh, CRP is around 28 milligram per deciliter, but remaining septic screen was negative and blood culture also no growth. On CSF analysis, uh, cell cytology shows five to six degenerative cells in which lymphocytes are 96%. CSF biochemistry, protein and glucose are normal and no uh, no growth was detected in CSF culture. On ultracentrifugation of the lipemic serum effectively produces the lipid layer at the top, which can be easily removed. And uh, infranatant fluid was we sent for uh, a lipid uh, profile, which is showing high levels of very high levels of triglycerides and high levels of VLDL. Triglycerides around 40,590 milligram per deciliter, which is coming around more than 95th percentile for this age and sex. We used here national cholesterol education program, which is indicated for infant more than uh, more than one year age group of children, not in infants, but no such data is available. So we used this one, which is coming around more than 95th centile. Uh, parents lipid profile was within normal limits. Here we made a differential diagnosis of hypertriglyceridemia, either maybe due to primary cause or secondary, but secondary cause is more common in newborn period. So we went uh, to rule out the secondary causes. We did thyroid profile because hypothyroid is also one of the cause for the hypertriglyceridemia, which is showing within normal limits. Renal function tests also normal, liver function tests normal, serum electrolytes are within normal limits. For ruling out metabolic causes, we sent TMS and GCMS, which is negative. And frequent monitoring of CBG is within normal limits and serum lactates also within normal and MRI is normal. Uh, no abnormality we detected. 
for uh, peripheral smear peripheral smear is showed microcytic hypochromic anemia um, but uh, no uh, re uh, high retic counts and platelets also within normal limit wbc also normal hplc of parents were normal this is due to ruling out the hemolytic causes of hypertrichinemia for ruling out of complications uh, we sent uh, pancreatic function test which is showing within normal limits and calcium also normal USG abdomen showed hepatomegaly, which is with a span of 5.5 centimeter, and splenomegaly also present, which is 1 centimeter. Liver echoes, pancreatic echoes are normal. Ra kidney and bladder is normal. On echo, no structural abnormality we detected. On ophthalmoscopic examination, we noticed a large tortuous uh, dilated vessels, which is color in white, lipemic, creamy color, against the background of uh, pinkish retina, which is suggestive of lipemia retinalis. And further bedside test, overnight center refrigeration of uh, uh, serum noticed to form the creamy layer on top with turbidity below, which is going in a favor of, favor of familial chylomicronemia syndromes. And the lipoprotein electrophoresis also showing presence of chylomicrons with, the high with high levels of VLDL. Here we are showing low levels of HDL with presence of VLDL with very high of chylomicrons. Here we made the diagnosis of familial hypertriglycidemia in favor of either type 1, type 4, or type 5. Type 5 is very uncommon in the pediatric people. And type 1 and type 4 is uh, differentiated by presence of, in type 1, presence of triglycerides along with the chylomicrons and creamy toppy layer. In type 4, triglycerides are high along with VLDL also increased with, uh, in electrophoresis, creamy top layer with turbid bottom. Uh, so we send the genetic report. Uh, during this time, baby continued on the breast milk. After two days, we repeated triglyceride levels, which we failed to decrease the levels. So, baby was started on capsule gem fibrosil at the dose of 20 mg per kg per dose BD before feed, continued on breast milk and added MCT oil supplementation. After one week, we noticed dramatic decline of triglyceride levels. After two weeks, gem fibrosil levels, mean level coming around to 648 milligram per deciliter. Uh, before discharge, this photo we taken, which is baby is very fine with the lipid profile is within normal limits. After that, we got to uh, we got that genetic report, which is showing uh, gene mutation at GP1 HBP1 uh, mutation at the level of exon four, which is uh, coming our homozygosity with the inheritance of autosomal recessive. So all these things are going fitting into the Friedrichsen classification type one of hyperlipoproteinemia. Coming to discussion part, familial hypertriglyceridemia is defined as fasting plasma triglyceride levels more than 150 milligram per deciliter, while severe is more than 885 milligram per deciliter. This is according to NCEP, this is for fitting only for 1 to 12 year old children. In newborn, such cutoffs are not there, not documented till now. Uh, Either monogen monogenic hypertriglyceridemia include mostly in genetic defects in the metabolism, polygenic inheritance due to interplay between the genetic, hormonal, and environmental factors. And it is a very rare condition occurring around in 1% of population in homozygosity incidences 1 in 1 million population. Secondary causes are more common compared to primary causes, especially in secondary causes, sepsis and hypothyroidism comes into first picture. Hypothyroidism leads to decreased basal metabolic rate, which leads to decreased expression of the LDL receptors, leads to the more cholesterol levels in the blood. Cholestasis, due to the regurgitation of the cholesterol and bile salts into the circulation, leads to high levels of cholesterol. In nephrotic syndrome, to compensate the proteinuria, liver started to increase the production of proteins, especially including lipoproteins. Uh, hemolytic disorders like red cell pyruvate kinase deficiency and hemolytic anemia like thalassemia also had hypertriglycidemia but cause is unknown. According to Indian Pediatric 2017 guidelines, they suggest that maybe severe hemolysis and chronic wasting is our probable responsibility for the hypertriglycidemia, especially seen in infant, but uh, documented uh, data is not uh, there. And metabolic causes also we ruled out. One is glycogen storage disease type 1 because in this one, glycolytic pathway is affected. So glycogen is converted into acetyl CoA, which is a pathway for the production of lipoproteins, which leads to free fatty acids, very high amount. In Neiman pig disease, which is a one cause, 
one of the type of lipid metabolism which is showing high levels of cholesterol and sphingomyelin types of lipoproteins one more thing is hereditary lipoproteinemia which our genetic test is supporting this diagnosis uh, so hyperlipoproteinemia is according to friedrichsen classification it is divided into five types type 1 is very rare type 4 is common in pediatric age group and in infants too in type 1 type 4 type 5 chylomicrons and triglycerides are very high these three are divided by the electrophoresis in form of creamy top layer with base is clear fluid it is going in favor of type 1 in creamy toppy layer with turbid bottom is going in favor of type 4 and type 5 in type 5 along with vldl chylomicrons and other cholesterol also increased along with triglyceride levels. Here, this uh, uh, pathophysiology is mainly depending upon the lipoprotein lipase enzyme, which is the uh, plays an important role for pathophysiology of hypertriglyceridemia. A short notes on lipoprotein lipase. It is synthesized primarily from the adipocytes, skeletal muscle, and lesser degree from heart, lung, liver, and other organs. After synthesis, it is anchored to the vascular endothelial surface. It consists of uh, five cofactors, which is oppose C1, oppose C3, oppose C2, but mainly roles oppose A5 and GP1, HBP1 gene. A APO A5 also known as lipase maturation factor, which is requiring for the maturation and secretion of the mature lipoprotein lipase. Glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchored HDL binding protein 1 transport the LPL to the capillary lumen. This in our case, here we noticed GP1 HBP1 mutation. And for the pathophysiology, two target points are there. One is exogenous pathway, one more is endogenous pathway. Exogenous pathway is bypassing the liver. After taking food, dietary lipids, dietary fats entered into the intestine are packaged into the chylomicrons with the help of ApoB48. It consists of Apo C2 on the surface of chylomicrons, which is serves as a cofactor for lipoprotein lipase, allowing LPL to hydrolyze into triglycerides, which triglycerides core of the chylomicrons to produce the free fatty acids. Uh, remaining chylomicron re uh, remnant, which is depleted of triglycerides, is taken up, the, taken up by the liver via LDL receptor, which is present on the liver and binding to APOE, then transformed into the very low density lipoproteins. This APOB48 is now changed into the APOB100. Endogenous fats via VLDL is then secreted into the plasma. It got converts into the IDL and into the LDL. LDL receptor, uh, peripheral cells had LDL receptor. After taking up into the LDL receptor, it going to forms the HDL, which is a scavenger for all uh, cholesterol uh, things. This uh, HDL is going again to liver. Again, endogenous pathway is going to start. Spec what is the spectrum of presentation of hypertriglycidemia? Presentation is variable in neonatal period, especially in neonatal period. It is variable and non-specific symptoms. Some babies will present with severe abdominal pain due to the hyperviscosity of the blood or maybe due to the pancreatitis. Some babies will present with large hepatosplenomegaly. Older children may present with failure to thrive. If triglycerides levels are reaching more than 2000 milligram per deciliter, we can notice some skin lesions in, in form of eruptive xanthomas. Triglyceride levels more than 2500 milligram per deciliter, we noticed lipemia retinalis. Acute pancreatitis is the primary cause for morbidity and mortality, one of the complications of hypertriglyceridemia and one of the most common complications and most serious. This is due to pancreatic lipase enters the capillaries during the stage of hypertriglyceridemia as a result of lipoprotein lipolysis, which initiated and releases the free fatty acid, which damages directly to the pancreatic cells. And this fat free fatty acids also activates the trypsinogen, which leads to local inflammation and leads to pancreatic cell necrosis. One more is risk of atherosclerosis. Luckily, in familial hypertriglyceridemia, risk of atherosclerosis is less because GP1, HBP1 expressed only in the capillary endothelium, not in large vessels or brain capillaries. Coming to management part, management of hypertriglyceridemia in children is very challenging. 
and that too in infants because there is a lack of established guideline coming for acute management fasting fasting is the main step since chylomicrons are produced from small intestine depending upon the dietary fat intake fasting results in robust decline, decline of the triglyceride levels and also gradual clearance of already existing chylomicrons during this period adequate hydration should be maintained with the iv fluids after uh, we are reaching triglyceride levels less than 1000 mg per deciliter we can go to dietary management with the restriction of fat intake to 10 to 15% of total daily calorie with formula feeds are better here we are comparing breast milk skimmed milk and fat free formula 100 ml of breast milk will contain 3.8 grams of fat skimmed milk contain 3.7 grams fat free formula like monogen will contain 2.2 grams coming to dietary management severe dietary restriction of fat is necessary that is less than 10 to 15% of total daily calorie and supplementation with the medium chain triglycerides which are metabolized through a chylomicron independent dependent so this will be very helpful and supplementation of fat soluble vitamins are necessary administration of fish oils may be beneficial but limited data in pediatric population one study around 2010 they successfully in treating the severe hypertriglyceridemia with a formula diet rich in omega 3 fatty acids especially with eicosa pentoic acid and docosa hexoenoic acid which daily inhibits the vldl production and reduces the chylomicron size also and increases the chylomicron clearance and along with medium ch chain triglyceride they decreased fast and effectively triglyceride levels coming to insulin iv insulin is a safe and effective treatment effective acute treatment for hypertriglyceridemia even in infants insulin uh, stimulates the lpl enzyme which leads to triglyceride to hydrolysis into free fatty acids and glycerol Thank you.